What we're uh, looking at today, we got a magnetic, it's actually an annular cutter style inexpensive uh, drill press, magnetic drill press that was sent to us by Vivor. It's over there in the box. But to start with, uh, so people understand, I have quite a bit of experience with magnetic drills. I've used uh, these for years and uh, there's that one magnet on and just so you know that this is not what we're reviewing today but I have understanding of them it's a real tool it is uh, you can spend 3,000 on it you can find them for as cheap as 2200 what we're looking at over here is roughly a uh, $300 maybe 400 I forget exactly um, drill so you do have to be a little bit realistic in your comparison. And this was sent to us today, uh, actually a few days ago. And we will see how to open the box. And yes, they sent this to us so that we could review it. We did not buy this. I had ideas of uh, buying one from an alternate situation so that I could see what we got sent but I don't think there's really any difference I see they've sent these to a lot of different people and I don't know okay these are the cutters so these are the cutters that come with it pretty well packed they are HSS high-speed steel and according to some of their writing those are M2 high-speed steel which was considered pretty good stuff back in the 70s. It's not considered that great now. The uh, better yet ones are the Cobalt. Um, you'll see some that say M42. But again, you get a whole set of them here for not much money. And the drill itself. There's a lubricant tank coolant coolant lubricant some assembly required we have tools with it that's good huh. ball uh, I like that that's the center point here's the drill itself And it has a, I can't quite reckon, kind of like a new car smell right now. It's got that vinyl chloride, uh, similar to a new, new car. And I had left the bigger brother over here. When the annular cutter style drills first started being popular in shops about uh, 1980, they may have been popular before that somewhere, but that was the first that I saw them in shops. The uh, early ones that we had, people would still be using this basic drill press here and they'd use an adapter on here. And uh, your basic adapter and cutter setup at that time would cost you about $1,500. So things have changed a lot as to what's available. And those were M2 cutters at that time also. They did not have um, the higher cobalt cutters. So let us on off. That must be for the drill. Turn it around so you can see it. Okay, it's a rocker switch for the magnet. And it's pretty straight. Pretty, I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> now, you can. This is on a good table here. So I've many times using these been able to power them down by the handles to where you can break the magnet strength loose. It's a nice handle, fairly stout. Uh -huh. Requires operator. 
not operator error, operator accuracy. When I first started seeing the dedicated machines for the annular cutters, I, uh, I just kind of looked at them and I, eh, little. It didn't matter whether they were good or not. That was just my attitude, little. Okay, we got a little more leverage. Eh, we can slide it sideways a little bit, but not a whole bunch. Fair amount of travel. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I don't need it. I've seen some people complain on these about uh, some of the models. This one has the interlock, so you can't turn you can't turn the motor on until the magnet's on. Honestly, that was one of my big complaints when they changed the old uh, Milwaukee ones. I like the non-safe version. I don't like the interlock, and I'll tell you why. Now, for annular cutters, there's no great advantage. But for uh, drill bits, when you're using this with a magnetic or any of these with a uh, Jacob-style chuck, you're locking it down, you can pick up on a center punch. Let the magnet float if you have the motor on, and you can float it in, letting it move the drill with the drill bit. Ooh, dangerous. Well, yeah, if you're an idiot. But... <sighs> Not everybody's an idiot. Not everybody's an idiot. I go more along the idea of let's just use, learn to use the uh, thing that's in our head. It's a tool. It can be used also. So we have not got, I thought I was going to get one with variable. We do not have variable speed. Hmm. Okay. We have one speed. Okay. Well, that uh, makes it a little bit harder to check for run out, but we'll be quick. Okay, externally, anyway, not much run out. Pretty straight. Let's see. Do I have, I have, there's two thumb screws. Turn that off, turn it around here for a second. A couple thumb screws that allow you to uh, put a locking force. Not much. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just imagining. No, no, they're not. It was just sticking a little bit. Those are probably part of the uh, water bottle holder. Yep. Okay, magnet back on. Use my other elbow. Because <clears throat> part that really matters for run out is the middle of it here. And I say this because I've seen. Now, the main thing where people are coming up with run out is not because the spindle itself is running out, but they're coming up with run out on some of the uh, smaller ones of these because of play in the cutter, the cutter not being the same size as the hole. Okay, right there we can see we get about 3,000 run out. Now, 3,000 run out means that the hole is off center by one and a half thousandths. Um, as far as seeing them run out and looking at stuff, um, I've seen quite a few of them that do that. And actually, in the ways, we can see that it moves back and forth ten thousandths of an inch there. We could probably tighten up the ways, but uh, not going to. I feel some load on it. It is factory. Um, but at the same time, let's, we can go over here to this one. Turn the magnet back on. Put an indicator on it. And we will probably find some sideways movement on the ways on this too. Yes, <laughs> about the same. Now this is a bigger drill. The stuff's for portable, portable use. It's not high precision, any of this. I've seen that for years. And, um, I've actually seen some of these ones right here. And one of my two is, I've got another one there. 
Um, one of these I bought new. I think the new one was the one that had the actual flaw in it. The uh, travel is actually off. One of these two, it's minor, but it will travel crooked a little bit. It doesn't form a straight up and down hole. Um, I've used these for line boring, all kinds of things. And uh, it's nice to have a magnetic drill, but they are a portable tool with failings, um, no matter which one you buy. Let's turn that off. I am going to go get some measurement tools. And half to three quarter or three quarter out. Let's use the little one right on the dividing line for sizes. Okay. First measurement about a half a thousandth over 750. Measured in a little deeper. Hmm. It's not a real deep hole. That's probably the way they're made for all of them. I have not had an annular style cutter um, machine before. I just haven't. Okay, that one is actually one and a half thousandths over there. It's quite a little bit. Back with three quarters of a thousandths over. Sometimes you get readings that are not perfect, whoops, perfectly what they are. You can read the same place twice and get a different reading. I like to have three readings that match before I say what it is, but I think we've got a little bit of taper here too. That one is one and a quarter over. So there, there is a little play there. Watch out for these cutters because they are sharp. Um, they're sharp. I don't care who made them. High-speed steel, cobalt high-speed steel, M42, whatever. They are just like end mills on the sides, and they will slice your hand if you're cutting them, uh, touching them directly. And we got two flats here. So, oh. Thought about grabbing a rag. It's nice to have a rag or something around these. If you're really careful, you can grab onto them with your hands. And, but I just prefer not to because I don't like getting sliced up. And how is the size on this? This, the cutter that came with it, and you have to have some clearance, but uh, it's a half a thousandth under. Now they make another version of this, which I've seen some other people had them given consistently a half a thousandth under. Other people had some of these given to them for reviews and they have ones with a quick change system instead of using the two set screws. And that's interesting idea, but since it's not the standard, the standard is this Weldon shank two flat um, I, I would prefer, for the most part, one that ha is the standard. Just because, and you're probably, that is also a half a thousandth under. And right there it's not. Right there it's actually pretty close to size. out of my lane and unpackaging. 
had somebody saying that about me talking about uh, CNC's as if I should have a lane I should only be capable of doing what you can learn by the time you're 16 be a specialist don't learn multiple things but uh, eh. some people they want to be just a specialist and not learn multiple things I guess that's their game that one's dead on three-quarter so there's going to be some variance apparently in the shanks on these I have not measured as I say I don't uh, why it doesn't go in oh set screws Oops, set screws are relatively long I like the fact that they gave me a ball driver hex And why did I pick the largest one here to start with? I think I did. Or did I get mixed up? I'm all thrown out. Yeah, I did. I kept with the largest one. I went with the largest one. And that's a question, too. They have, uh, and I've seen several people mention this. That is a deficit that the size, it's, okay, it's inked on here. It's nice to have it otherwise, but inking works. Okay, this says it is 15 by 30 millimeters. So what we're figuring is that this is 30 millimeters in diameter on the outside. What is it? 0.589. I would say that's probably metric. I don't know all my metrics off the top of my head. That's not 30 millimeter though. Um, that doesn't even make sense. Ah, 30 millimeter is the length. Mm. <laughs> okay. 30 millimeter is the length. And while I do metric uh, conversions back and forth, I don't know all of them. A few of them I know. 0. 0.588. Eighty-eight and a half. Eight and a half. Calculator for a second. Ah, so, yeah, somewhere around 30. About right. I wanted to check in the event a lot of people were complaining that this stuff came with metric sizes and yeah it would be nice to have inch sizes you can a hole is a hole we're not trying usually to bore something exactly but uh, okay now let's see we're going to want coolant on this I don't know if this coolant system would work um, with like uh, cutting oil. You know, it's generally these are meant for water soluble. They're meant for something that flows easily. And the reason I say cutting oil is let's say we were wanting to work with the M2 cutters, not buy the more expensive ones. If we were using uh, regular cutting oil, would would help us with the high sulfur black nasty cutting oil would help us a lot but i don't know if it will flow well through uh, the orifice in the cutter here now if you're just cutting mild steel the water soluble is fine and i've seen a lot of people reviewing these they just don't even bother to hook this up they just squirt a little on the outside they're trying to do a quick review and uh, i think we need to find the tube. This is the drill chuck that comes with it. And the drill chuck, you're going to definitely see more run out there than you will on the cutter because it's, it's an inexpensive drill chuck. They run out. This adapter is a threaded adapter for a threaded chuck. It's not a, a uh, Jacob's taper. There's a taper on your shanks. There's a Morris taper usually, which this is not. That one is a Morris taper. Morris taper that uh, is used for drill bits and a lot of your adapters. And then on the other end, for your more expensive uh, drill chucks, will be what's called a Jacobs taper, which is also a positive taper, but it's specifically for Jacobs chucks and even non-Jacobs chucks. All kinds of uh, people use it. Okay, this adapter is a full thousandths undersized, so it's definitely 
it's going to run out between the spindle and this. It's, it's going to have some run out. It's going to run out uh, four to six thousandths, depending on how it ends up setting in there as far as indicator run out. Um, at the same time, I can say that my old Turner drill press over there runs out a good ten thousandths um, and has for a long time. And probably run, we'll run out more in all reality. But we're not ready to check that yet. I was just looking for the hose. And if we don't have a hose in here, that could be the reason why most people testing these don't hook a hose up. Ah, found it. Yes, found it. It was in with the instructions. Maybe they're trying to encourage me to read the instructions, or at least look at them. Let's do, let's see if there's something in here of interest. Safety warnings, general power tool safety warnings, use and care, don't get hurt. Vibration safety, don't hang on to it when it's vibrating. Ground it. Hole diameter. I should go get my other glasses. I do have another pair of those that, I can't hardly read that, 8840. This is the 8840. Uh, I don't see any letter after that. Yeah, no, it's straight 8840. So what we're supposed to be do, able to do is to drill up to a 40 millimeter hole. That one was unlabeled, but I'd imagine that was the biggest one we had. Eh, I don't feel like grabbing calipers. Um, twist drill is three up to 16. 16 millimeter is five eighths. That's pretty good size twist drill. Uh, da -da -da. 1300 watts, which would convert to horse and a half ish. 810 RPM. These other ones with letters and different numbers are the ones with variable speed. It's the 8860 is a slower RPM fixed speed. Yeah. Okay. We have a volume adjustment. in there good goes in there that worked good we are off I did not look to see how the center is put in here I neglected that it uh, well it's got a step on it so I would say it has to go in before the cutter does trying to think probably probably have a sliver hopefully not in my hand but I probably have a sliver of steel uh, something I was thinking that was a sliver of 4140 which would be a very good test put this through okay so this just floats in here the purpose for the center is twofold one is to uh, one is to position it which wow as you can see it's not very accurate for position in your hole at all so yeah a lot of people are just ignoring that and that is a lot of slop in between there But that gives you some idea of where your hole goes. Apparently we have two magnet coils in here. Don't know that that matters too much. It matters more a fact of how well they work, but there's two magnet coils. Okay. 
And I do not want to drill through, cut through my table. So I'm gonna go grab some other glasses and a couple pieces to work on and um, might even just take a break for a second while I do that. So is it supposed to just roll back down on its own? Yeah, normally there is a lock. Are we filming again? Yeah. Yeah, Nor normally there is a lock. Uh, if there was no lock, this one here, if you see, has got uh, lock might be missing. <laughs> <laughs> I have had trouble with that. Here's the, the lock is a set screw. It was supposed to be a wing screw originally, but the, uh, yeah, the wing screw is gone on this one. So that's uh, why it's got a, and so this one does the same thing right now. Okay. If we look at the other one, we'll see there's a little wing screw up there. And you could do that on this. You know, there's a lot of modifications you could do if you wanted. You could add, drill and tap an extra hole in here and put a wing screw in. You could make it reversing. You could put a variable speed underneath it, uh, you know, in the cord. It normally, if those things, um, if the variable speed or reversing is important to you, you're generally better off to just buy that model. I'm going to take this over to the mill to fill it up with cutting oil instead of uh, bringing a jug over. So we have got some nice black cutting oil in here because uh, it works better on the harder stuff and we're going to try cutting some harder stuff here and there. This piece here is uh, part of a caterpillar frame. Not super hard, but eh, not super soft either. We'll get some oil flow. Ah. Now we have a problem here because I'm, huh? it should, should be trying to flow. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Thought maybe because I'm off center, it's not letting it start flowing. I will push the center up more. Gravity don't fail me. Hmm. Well, let's spin it. Nobody was using the oiling. Is there some kind of a trick to it? Or is this just too viscous? Should at least flow a little bit. Maybe we just have to prime it the old fashioned way? Yes, yeah. Wrench, pliers, something. This one here says it's a six inch metric. Oh, now it's coming out. <laughs> I opened it all the way, all the way. Uh-huh, okay. But it wasn't until I bottomed out the... Uh-huh, okay. That's a decent well. Yeah, that's plenty. When it's, but we do have to get there first because yeah. it don't take that much. Now I've got the valve was shut. It's moving slower when it was shut. It was building up an air column. Mm. 
One of the things with using uh, the cutting oil too, you really kind of want some cutting oil to come out before you even rotate it on your part so you're not damaging things a whole bunch. Is that went on too? Yeah. Oh, okay, just checking. So we will see here this biggest cutter, toughest one. We got a piece of 4142 after after if it cuts through this. Piece of hardened 4140. Which is really beyond what this sort of a tool is meant for, but I like to test things if I'm testing them. So will the cutting fluid come out the center? It should, yeah. even makes a little pumping noise now. Yeah. Huh, that's kind of cool. Okay, now we try cutting. I back off to let the chips clear out. Any kind of a cutter, if you get chips built up to where they can't come out, you're not giving the cutter a fair chance. Ah, well, it's not flowing again. through it. Actually, the warmish plug fell out right there. And uh, the chips were actually coming up, even though they were stringing around this, they were coming up pretty good. So, and this says that we can go 30 millimeters deep. And that is a question whether we can go we can try it on this, but I don't know that we can. I think that's over 30 millimeters. We will still drill into it a little bit just to see how the cutter um, takes this hardened 4140. Oops. That way. Cut that in. Now, when we were doing this one too, you notice we were on just part of this. And that's one of the things with these, any of these magnets. It's not that the magnet has whatever the number of pounds of holding. It's that it has that number of pounds of holding when it's on a thick piece of metal and it's all nice and flat, which this was not. Um, and yeah, it was stuck to that piece and not transferring through to the table too much. Turn the magnet back off. Now, because obviously we can't put the magnet on this round piece, let's go over here and come up next to it and this uh, table is an inch and a quarter table so it's stuck good and we will see it's a little fast for it but
they're slipping. Handle is slipping. They don't have a direct connection on the rack. Interesting. No, I have a connection on the rack. Ah, what I don't have, this. That's why they gave us the other, <laughs> other screw. This has a clamp to quick position where it goes. That's what is going on. Some people have complained about not having uh, directions for these drills too. And hey, maybe, maybe we're the direction, uh, direction replacement now. Okay. It's not really liking the 4140. It did cut some, but I think we have dulled the bit to where it's going to not be happy from here on out. <laughs> we will have a little more, little more push on it though. Let's try. Nope. M2 cutter done. It did uh, start out on the 4140. And if we had had a variable speed, so we could turn the speed down. I mean, I'm not trying to ruin the bit. That's really too fast for that bit. But it's the one I got. We didn't get a variable speed machine to test out. But you do think a variable speed, it might have done it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, variable speed. You'd slow it down with the hardened 4140. You'd slow this down to a lot slower speed. Same concept, though. Let's just try a smaller bit. Because a smaller bit is the same idea as uh, turning it slower. You're turning it slower because the bit is fairly large. Got a 12 is the smallest I see. Just a little bigger than I'd like, but it may be what we try. I don't remember. Somewhere they told us what we had, the 24, 13. Yeah. I guess under that they're figuring we're going to use a uh, twist bit. Yeah, it's fairly small. It's fairly small. It's too bad that I don't have a piece of uh, handy to destroy 4140 that would let us go deep enough to go all the way through it. You know, cut a plug out. Yeah. Of course, on the other hand, just because they say that it's a 30 millimeter depth doesn't mean that that's really what it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's way super deep. I don't think it's going to do it. And we could do it separate if we did without the oiling center and just oiled it externally because the oiling center is going to take up some of the room. Yeah. And it's also supposed to help push the slug out a little bit. Now that I had repositioned it all down. Okay. did okay with the softer steel. I mean, that's not soft, soft steel, but softer. Most people at home are not going to be cutting holes through hardened 4140.
went through. Popped it out. So if we had variable speed, we would have done fine with the bigger bit too, even though they're just M2. Um, or rated as M2. Some, some people make a better M2 than others. M2 is, that's molybdenum based uh, tool steel. Uh, Oh, we will someday. We will someday, you know, for our 12 viewers. <laughs> yes, no, we will do one on tool steels. And what is tool steel as a, a side sideline? It's not just a matter of um, one thing, which is what the whole video will be about. A tool steel is anything you decide to make tools out of. 1018, even though it's not normally thought of as a tool steel, if you make a crappy wrench out of 1018, guess what? It's the tool, it's the steel you made a tool out of. Uh, it's a very misguided thing when people say, oh, this is tool steel. Yeah, um, <laughs> all kinds of tool steels. You generally don't think of 1018 as a tool steel, but 4140 hardened many times is a tool steel. A lot of tools are made out of 4140 and someone else will say oh no that's that's a steel for building machinery parts but it's not a tool steel it, it's a wide wide description um, your better bits if you have the choice are the higher higher cobalt ones okay so um, even though they're not rated as uh, being the best bits I'm, I'm pleased with that it's kind of sad that we ruined our other one testing it but somebody's got to test it you know uh, a friend of mine that uh, was talking to a couple days ago. Oh, that reminds me. Of, yes, well, I'll, I'll off camera. I'll talk to. Um, yep. But anyway, I was talking to him, and he was saying that he only buys the cobalt ones. And I told him that the M42 is also cobalt bolt, but he's got. A particular company that he buys them from and I didn't see any cobalt ones in the Vibor lineup and that would be a molybdenum based high-speed steel with extra cobalt added mm. uh, early on what they would say is how much cobalt is added and you'll see that some of them generally the cheaper ones just say cobalt cobalt drill bits cobalt uh, high-speed steel okay it's got some did it have an extra 2%, 8%, 12%? Uh, there's specific formulations, which M42 is a pretty good one that is publicized a lot. Although some of the stuff I've got also that was supposed to be M42 from cheaper companies didn't hold up any better than standard M2. So there are liars out there. And you've got to always be realizing that there are liars. which is not just a musical instrument. <laughs> so we will put our drill press piece in here, our drill chuck. I can see where a person would like the idea of a quick change uh, chuck a whole lot better, but I, the fact that you're going to have weird cutters again, I wouldn't do it. I definitely would not do it. I would stay with the standard. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thumb screw that took us forever to get turned on. I'm going to turn it off. Now, also with this M2 cutter, that was with us using the regular dark cutting oil. We were not using the uh, water soluble. And if you were using the water soluble, even the best of them, it is not going to let your cutter hold up so well. I would, if you're going to, it's fine and it's cleaner. The water soluble is cleaner. It's fine for a lot of stuff you do, but if you're going to be working with alloy steels and uh, going through hard stuff, I would not recommend it at all. Okay. So now on the other one over here you don't have like this was slipping because I didn't have it tight enough on that one uh, it has various places that it bolts on if you look on here you can see there's three places that they bolt it on so once you bolt it on it's going to be solid in that place on the other hand 
this is not meant to put out as much pressure as that other one. And so I kind of like the clip clamp on system where we can quickly position it. Uh, I just didn't know what was happening at first. I'm going to gauge the safety interlock again. Turn this on. Yeah, you can see the drill. See the end of the drill running out. Um, and since we are a numbered based people here on many things, we go ahead and put one of these number doohickeys out there. Now we're on the end part of the drill chuck, which generally these are not that accurate anyway. Even if you get a good Jacobs chuck, you will see a lot of times that this part here will run out even though the center doesn't. So, um, yeah, I don't want to. We've got about 15 thousandths run out there. Gun vari variable speed would have been nicer to play with. But you could plug uh, one in. You're probably going to find, after our review of this, everybody's going to want one. And since everybody's going to want one, they're going to sell out quickly. And some of you are going to have to have the ones just like this that don't have variable speed, in which case you'll buy a variable speed unit from, from somewhere else or from them. But I haven't checked out their variable speed uh, units. Let's go grab some regular drill bits, and we'll use that drill chuck a little bit. And why did we pick a miraculous five sixteenths? We did that so that we can tap with a three eighths sixteen tap and we will take a take a machine spiral point yeah, not new but not totally dull so that'll work I don't feel like center punch well, I can go pick up a center punch over in the toolbox there I need a hammer oh that's the other thing which will not be here I don't think yeah no it'll be in the other drawers they say that we can also drill a five eighths inch or 16 millimeter so figuring that we want to try that too we will center punch don't go through the things that knock the head in a sideways Nice, calm blue. So it's actually a good thing that I had those glasses on that bent up. They took a lot of the impact. They really did. I could, I could feel them crunching and uh, going away as, as I walked into that. Crumple zone. Yeah, I wasn't concerned about the, the uh, holding up. That one's dull yet. Probably all going to be dull. We need to go through and have some sharpening on all of these just for fun at some point here. Why am I drilling and tapping the 4140 instead of something that's easier? Well, it's what we do. It's just sort of what we do. And this is where uh, I need more travel yet. Uh, okay the drill bit up in there a little further will it go further yes it will go further okay i'll get us so this is where normally if if we had the old one that didn't have the safety interlock we could come in here and we could pick up on that center real easy while it rotated we can lock it in think we're there turn it on <laughs> You can see how easy that would be before people made all these safety ideas if instead of having the drill bit move over you just let the drill press itself move over and then you'd be online but we will bump it a little turn it back on turn on the motor, turn it off the motor 
turn off the magnet, bump it just a little bit, turn on the magnet. Okay. You can bump them a little bit when they're on through, should use the soft hammer. Okay. That works, we got it. Oh yeah, this is going to be a real problem as far as tapping. Actually, this one is not rated for tapping. The ones that are actually rated for tapping, same basic machine, but it will have variable speed and reverse. Now, the big old one over there, I know I've tapped three quarter inch holes with those before. I kind of think I did a seven eighth, and I think I've used them for starting one inch. I know when we were doing the uh, 36 millimeter, we did not use the drill to run the tap. within its own hole, a little wobble up here on the chuck, it really isn't causing a problem. And in our shop, very possibly just a quick, lighter, um, with the, the drill chuck doing little holes might very well be what we use this for more so than its maximum capabilities. But we may fall in love with the annular cutters and start using them more, buying more of them too. Like I say, I hadn't had enough need for that kind of work. There's times where it would have been easier. Now, this is going to be, since we're not supposed to be doing this, it's going to be a matter of turn it on, turn it off, because it only goes the one way, but we can't test the one that's similar, only different, because this is the only one we got. So, on. <laughs> So, if we had one that we could control better, it would tap pretty good, at least in the 3 8 inch. Uh, did a nice job on the 4140. For the, I should go look up the price. We'll put, we'll put the po price and we'll have a link for the things. And yes, we will gain money from, if you use our link to go buy one. If you go buy it off of Amazon or somebody else, well, we don't get anything and it's just not as happy for us but oh well you know it's not like this is going to make or break us um what else can we try we tried tapping we cut oh we still got the what am i saying we still got the five eighths hole to drill here definitely we are definitely okay we have that is done and the five eighths hole we could perspectively say that we would have a pilot for it. I don't think that that's unrealistic to think that we would have a pilot for a 5 8 hole, so we could just plain use this 5 16 as a pilot to continue on. And again, I would really rather go slower, but I didn't get a variable speed system to play with. It went in a long ways before I hit that off switch. I thought about waiting another half a second, but I was like, yeah, it's moving. She's moving. Didn't want to break the tap. I wanted to see if we had the power to drive. It had good power. It did. It moved out. It did the job. And yeah, my friend that uh, 
uses the annular cutters, was talking about the cobalt ones that he buys. Uh, he was wondering whether or not these are worth buying, and I think I will tell him that it is for his situation. We will get that phone call later. That's not that. It's still an interruption, but uh, yeah. Okay. We, we will have a problem with this, so we're not going to do that in 5 8 so We're going to come back here to our other steel where we don't have to go as high because we got that jacked up a little bit. I think this one will be better for doing our 5 8 yeah, Maybe it's more important than I thought. Okay, so let's see. Over here, I want to get on the straighter part. Okay, I want to put a clamp on that one too. Not actually part of the frame, part of the suspension components. And uh, it's for a 793F. And if you can tell me what it's for, you get extra credit in the comments. If you can tell me what the part is. Um, Do you get anything else other than me saying yay? Um, no, but I will respond back with a yay. Maybe not anything else, but a yay, if you tell me exactly what the component is. <laughs> Chuck spinning. Ah. Hmm? Oh, it wore it down a little bit. Okay, okay. It did that. <laughs> it's supposed to do that. Um, it did that very well. So, being as I am what I am, it said 16 millimeter. We have 19 millimeter, which is three quarter inch. We're just going to try something a little bigger. Because we can. We have the technology. Uh, drill bit's going to be unhappy if we go too fat, too high. The, uh, we get burn up factor. We, ooh, three flats. This is the one. This is the one. And this is a good Chinese drill bit. I, I say that, um, actually some of these Chinese drill bits are okay. There are, the Indian ones are a little iffy. Um, it's the step shank. They get extra from Unfortunately, there's a U.S. company, uh, a couple of them, I, they mention about the high carbon and even their ones that say high speeds, they burn up right away every time I've used them. Um, I won't bother mentioning the name right now, but I've been very, very disappointed in their stuff. And it's not that, well, I'll get back there, yep.
you always want ones that do drills that are high speed steel. Stay away from any of the ones that say high carbon steel, alloy steel, um, other buzzwords that are not high speed steel. But uh, there's a couple of them, even when they say high speed steel are not that great at drill bits. Okay, and still on the flats, that should help it from not spinning so. What size, did I go all the way to an inch or did I just stop at seven eighths, didn't I? Decided to be, do you remember? Did you think? Oh, I think you stopped at seven eighths. Yeah, I think I grabbed a seven eighths. I'm sure that's what it was. I didn't want to push it way, way beyond what it's supposed to do. Yeah, that doesn't look like that's it. not, mm. eh, motor windings are warm outside. They're not burning up hot. I haven't smelled any, uh, a lot of times, you know, a lot of this stuff, you push it to the maximum and it still works afterwards, but you get that first wisp, wisp, wisp of magic smoke, mm. you know? And that's the thing, a lot of people, the magic smoke comes out of the motor, motor quits, and then they want to put the magic smoke back in. It doesn't matter, it's too late. <laughs> you, you, it doesn't matter, it ain't gonna work again, yeah. no. Once the magic smoke comes out, it's done. <laughs> a little bit I see I'm on the edge of the table where I would be hitting the table yeah. uh, coils a little bit warmer it is there's a little heat you can feel there I'm not scared of it yet but uh, I got a little warmth okay yeah that's what I really should do my friend uh, that was talking about the cobalt bits I should but they wouldn't be available anymore by the time he finished testing it but he likes to test things he, he would he would do, he would do whatever it is. It worked. It did more than it was supposed to by quite a bit. And as I accidentally turned the drill on, which, uh, and it didn't come on because it's got an interlock. I wonder if, let me try that just for curiosity. If I go off, if I go to on, ah. <laughs> so as soon as I turn the magnet on, the motor comes on. Hmm. That's not the way the other ones do their safety. <laughs> no, they actually make you turn it on first. But like I say, I'm not that uh, fond of that safety concept anyway. Biggest thing I can see wrong, you know, it's not perfect. But the biggest thing I can see wrong is that they underrated it. Um, you know, it's kind of like when I, back in the days for the Z28 Camaros, you know, they'd say, how do I make it put out 450 horse? And the answer was step on the throttle further. It was basically it put out more horsepower than what it claimed from the factory. <laughs> um, it is warm now. I mean, it's warm. Gearbox is warm. We can't test it for long, long term. Um, 
I mean, we will. We're going to kick it around here. We're going to use it for things. Obviously, we can drill 5 eighths, half inch holes, a lot of the holes, and it's a lot easier to carry than the little one. We can uh, see if we like the annular cutters, we'll probably buy some more. We'll probably buy them from somebody else because we'll probably buy the cobalt ones, which I don't see Vibor offering. But uh, it works. It drills holes. Uh, it's got pr plenty good torque. I don't know how well the variable speed would work because we didn't get that option to try. But uh, yeah, it works. It's definitely worth the, I don't remember what the price was. We'll post it up there along with the link. I think it was 320 something, but uh, don't remember for sure. Um, like I say, this one they gave to me for free. Maybe it was the best one they ever made. You know, maybe they made one just special for me, but I don't think so. I don't think they consider me special or fancy at all. I think they just thought they'd gamble that we'd put out a video and uh, maybe sell a few from it. So that's it. We'll do uh, links to this video later and some uh, quick, um, quick videos too. So what do you call those shorts? Yeah, we'll do a few shorts on this also. I just about forgot one of the things that you do sometimes with these is you will actually drill stuff upside down. That's going to get in the way of what I'm doing now. Let me have you bring the camera over here to the other side, the main camera too, so that I can drill it to this side. And when you're upside down, of course, you remember that uh, you have trouble with uh, your oil sticking, uh, you know, it doesn't want to go uphill on your drill very good, so there's a problem with oil running around. Let's go get one of my things that we have learned that works real good for this. We're not going to not try and fight that quite so much. We took the oiler bottle off. You get a subtractive where normally you have the weight of the drill is helping you drill things. Well, the weight of the drill is trying to pull it away. So we have to hold up the drill too. We're going to use that with the highest size that it is rated for. We're not going to try and push it to a three quarter inch right now. And the, uh, They give you a strap with this so that you can strap it up to make sure that it doesn't, which if it gets wonky and falls off and you got the strap holding it really is not a lot better. Um, I have chained the big ones before. We actually used chains and cables, but anti-seize. Anti-seize kind of stays there with the drill bit. It, uh, it works amazingly for these uh, overhead. And I've done that for a few years now since we found that out. I'm going to wipe the chips off a little bit because I don't want to get all the metal in my anti-seize and make the bolts that we use it with hard to deal with later. But if we were doing a big tapping job, we just write several bottles of it off and use them up. We will also get to see the drill bit come out the top of this unless it doesn't work. Well, it's getting there. You can see a little bubble coming up. Slow down a little bit because it's an uneven surface. It can grab really good. So, at the maximum size, it worked. We'll turn it off. Pick it up. I got one other. We could probably go on for all kinds of time, but there's one other thing I'm curious about that you can do with the big drills. I just got looking. Can we do it with this? Because it would have been handy. And 
what that is, is on the big ones, you put the handle to the other side. So as we move the camera and we're conflicting there, if we would have just swapped the handle around on this, then we could have drilled in the side that we originally started on. But don't know if that's a thing with this or not. Well, so don't come out real easy for starters. The other ones you have a little bolt here. But, uh, yeah, okay, I didn't grab the right tools for what I was doing. I thought it would just slide right out easy. There we go. Okay, plastic bushing, plastic bushing. Uh oh. Okay, well, I'm not seeing it as being. I think you gotta take everything apart. Okay. Yep. It doesn't readily move side to side. I would have much rather had that than some goofy safety feature. And while we're talking about safety features, and we could have this on its own little thing too, but it's part of the whole discussion. I am all for safety items that make things safer, but ones that just make it stupider or make it more dangerous, I don't like. And I will warn it has bothered me for some time. Yeah, it said in there better before I scored it up. Okay, so the handle does not rotate, does not switch from one side to another. That would be something that could be easily modified. Instead of having this end piece the same diameter as the other side, we could have it nicked down and have a captive, ideally some kind of a little threaded piece that collar that goes on there and you could pick it up, turn it to the other side, that would be a lot handier. I'm not complaining, I'm just making a suggestion if there are engineers somewhere in the world look at this as a review. But here is something that I totally, totally hate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. In the old days, yes, we had a grinder, you could accidentally turn it on and you could hurt yourself. Now, you need, when you're wearing gloves, you need to use your second hand over here. So when I have a side handle on, especially on the big grinders, I hate this. It is so dangerous to have to fumble around to get this grinder turned on instead of being able to have a good solid grip on it and then just turn it on. Yeah. Their idea was cover their ass, but the reality is it made them stupid asses that made it dangerous. Um, I was mentioning on there that you could use a variable speed uh, inline control for this. You can't. That would be a mistake. You really, if you have the choice to get one with a variable speed in it, it's a better deal. Or just use it like we did here without the variable speed. You saw that it, it did get by without it. I, I prefer variable speed. Reason being, if you put a variable speed in line to this, it's going to reduce your magnet power too. So then you're not going to grab it well enough. And we just realized that looking at this, talking about it. So, uh, yeah. So uh, the inline, you'd have to actually wire your own in here. Probably cut your cord to the motor and wire in there along with a reversing switch separate. It would, it would be something you could do, but I'd prefer to just have it in the machine to start with. And yeah. Okay.